Maybe next time I come, I will make the ziyarat. I'll bring it from New York. We'll see if it's needed. Yeah. If it's needed, if the community needs it and is showing that respect, it is welcoming the physical presence of the Prophet. Yeah. The first time they organization, AICP. Yeah. I know. They I know. They didn't know how to manage all the crowd with over 500 people. I know. And they were coming in, in, in a huge group, men, men and women. I know. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Nobody knows how to take care of it now. What I was trying to say, years ago I came here, correct, with the beard, Sakali Sharif with the beard of the Holy Prophet those who need translation if you can translate for them it will be much easier huh? if they don't need they don't need it's okay yeah so later when Hashim comes for him you understand 80% uh, 80% is enough Mahdi alayhi salam comes I'm going to speak Bosnian that time <laughs> Yeah, you'll be okay. You'll be explaining to him, inshallah. Some years ago when we came here, we brought the Sakali Sharif, the beard of the Holy Prophet, they said to us, Salam here. Um, but there were people who were not showing too much respect for it, and certain people, they are punished for that. Because this is the physical presence of the Prophet ﷺ. Hazrat Khalid bin Walid, he took it and he was putting it in his turban when he was fighting against the Christians. And when he was fighting and one soldier, one general knocked him and his turban fell down, he didn't care. Straight away he went down, although the person was going to kill him, straight away he went down and took it and he kissed it and he put it back on his head. He won that battle. So to show respect to the Sakal Sharif, it is important. It's more important than to see it. So many people, they're seeing it. So many people in front of Sakal Sharif, they're looking like this. Looking like that. What is it? What is it? They're taking pictures. What is that you're going to see? Is the hair. Well, you expect the hair to uh, what, they have different colors? Why well, you expect the hair to turn into something else? It is the hair. But it is the hair of the Prophet So it is as if physically the Prophet is there. How are you going to show respect and love to it? That's why Allah was warning even the Sahabis, saying in the presence of the Prophet don't raise your voices. Speak softly. You cannot carry weapons in the presence of the Prophet. So which means there may be so many ziyarats that are happening, but if people are not showing proper respect, it's not going to be too much blessings coming. You don't know anything, but you have respect, Allah will bless you. So many people, they know so much, but they don't show respect. If punishment comes to them. Uh, in our way, we are taught differently. The Sakal sharif how are you going to carry it? The Ottoman soldiers, they were bringing Sakale Sharif to the battle places when they are fighting, carrying it above their heads. Never you're going to bring it down. How we are coming around has to be proper. It is that the Prophet ﷺ is there. What are you going to do? You're going to kiss it, you're going to give salawats, you're going to have full respect to it, you're not going to come with your arrogance. And you don't show your back to it, definitely. So, I know a lot of people, they don't even know. You see, Muslims, they pray, they read too much, they know so many things, but they don't have any respect. Especially if you don't have a shaykh, you don't know what respect is. Because now, 
when we have a shaykh that is coming, we know how to sit properly. Correct. We know how to stand properly. Nobody really needs to tell us. Something inside is telling us, okay, we must show this a little bit more respect. And the shaykh is looking, the one who has respect, he prays more for that one. So if you don't have a shaykh, you don't know how to behave properly. You think everyone is the same. Now in the presence of the Prophet ﷺ, because he is always with Allah. Allah is always with him. You cannot now be in the presence of Allah five times a day, standing in front saying Allahu Akbar, you cannot even move three times. Correct? When you say Allahu Akbar, can you go Allahu Akbar like that? You cannot, there are specific movements. You have to put your hand like this, you have to move ruku like this, specific. Now if you move any other way, then your prayer is not acceptable, acceptable and you're going to be punished because of that. So all these things, of course when you have the Sakal al-Sharif, you're going to show respect. But people who don't have a shaykh and they don't know respect, they become rebellious. Then in front of the Prophet ﷺ, they can make the biggest mistake. So, respect, the adab, it is very important. The adab, it is the soul of Islam. It is a spirit. Having manners. The manners makes the peasant to become a king with manners. Without manners, the king can become worse than a gypsy. And in the divine court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's not looking for your knowledge because he is the creator of knowledge. You don't bring knowledge in front of Allah. You come in front of a king, you come in front of a general, are you going to bring your weapons to show how much you have? Are you going to come in front of the king showing how much wealth you have in front of the king? The king will look and the king will take it. Correct? But what do you show? You show adab. In front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you show adab. And this is what tariqat, this is what dergah is. To show those manners. To prepare ourselves to be in divine presence. This is knowledge, but this is more your own knowledge, knowledge of yourself, not knowledge of thousands of books that is out there, but knowledge of the book that is inside of you. You study yourself, you watch yourself. That time you'll be rewarded. It's very easy, inshallah. Right, so we'll see. If we are ready, then we're going to bring it. We have the beard of Hazrat Ali Karamallah Wajh also. We also have the beard of Shaykh Abdul Qadir Gilani Sir. Every time you show respect to that, more blessings will come to you. I know people who are holding on to the beard of the Prophet ﷺ, but they don't know even how to keep it. It's very heavy. It is very, it's not easy. There's a lot of responsibility. I know people that they get so crazy, they love it. They have a special room and they put for it. They put the room uh, special for the hair. But I'm looking at the house, the house is dirty. It's finished. <laughs> you cannot be dirty and have the presence of the Prophet. Then we're looking, oh, people are fighting in the house. People are cursing in the house every How can you do that? Then we're looking, okay, this kind of dirtiness, you know some, I mean, mashallah, I know you Bosnians think that you guys are very crazy and this and this, but let me tell you, you guys are the cleanest people that I've seen. As much as you can, you clean everything properly, huh? which is good. So you know when you go to someone's house, for instance, the dirtiness that they have is not because they are poor, but because they just cannot be bothered. And sometimes the things that's dirty over there, you see, it's not one week or two weeks, it's years. Years, they're not even looking there. What happens when you're not cleaning up? Shaitans are going to be around there. The jinns, they're going to be around there. Just to take something and to wipe it, you are cleaning the whole place. That's why, you know, uh, the women, 
how good you feel huh? when you get up and you just make your bed and you just clean the floor you just to sweep the floor just that action you feel as if you took away all the wrong things all the bad things you clean just by sweeping the floor because that's exactly what happened these eyes cannot see but these eyes are going to see so when you see those houses I'm saying the houses are dirty the children they don't have too much manners but they're very religious people they're very religious they love the Prophet that I said to Islam so much then it is showing you cannot carry it you can't carry that weight that burden and if you cannot carry it uh, very unusual things are going to happen to you our Shaykh said when you're always in the presence of the awliyaullah you don't watch yourself awliyaullah they don't curse at you they don't punish you but they have other ones that are around them ones that you cannot see they are not happy they may smack you like in Bursa in Turkey the old Ottoman capital of Bursa it says every block you see there is a makam every block that you see there is a turba every block that you see you're walking there's a saint buried there there's a sahabi there there's a saint buried there so it's a very holy place and if you don't watch your manners they smack you and it says in Bursa you see so many people their faces are bad they're walking like this and walking like that because they are not watching their manners we don't know anything but we know manners we'll be rewarded for it inshallah rahman this is important yeah so we'll see my intention i was thinking of it but i'm saying let's wait a little bit more maybe sometime in the future inshallah we'll take it we made that time uh, Adir and hashim and samir speak to other people to say that we're having a ziyarat and you're going to come <laughs> But this is Zeret with the Osmanli Naqshbandi way, okay? I've been known to do crazy things sometimes. I remember bringing the Sakali Sharif one time, some place, and I washed everyone up there. These are very nice people. It's my second or third time visiting them. They're not Naqshbandis, they're just welcoming us. But I went there and I see people, they're not ready. To make the ziyarat, I started yelling at them and cursing at them. How dare you come to the presence of the Prophet wasalam, wearing ripped jeans and a baseball cap turned backwards. You don't even dress like that to go to your boss's house if your boss invites you to come for dinner. But if you ask them, oh, I love Prophet wasalam, so much. And I wash up this guy, he was doing that. And I said, mashallah, big progress you made. He came into Islam, okay? White guy. That's a big progress that you made. That's the first time that I saw you, you're wearing jalabiya. Now you're wearing a t-shirt and jeans. And he says, well, Allah doesn't look on my outside. Allah looks what is inside. I said, yes. Maulana Rumi is saying, what is inside, you're going to show what is outside. He got very upset with me. Everybody got very upset, but I don't care. I have to say something because I'm not invited there. If it is their Sakal Sharif, their situation, they can do whatever they want. I'm not going to say one single word. I do not interfere. If I come to a masjid and they have one ziyarat and they're doing all sorts of wrong things, I will not interfere. I'm not responsible. I'll just sit down very quiet, kiss it, and go back. But if it is something that we are organizing by ourselves, there's a certain protocol there. It has to be. Inshallah. We will see next time in the future. Assalamu alaikum. Any questions? Anyone else? Alhamdulillah. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Ya Habibi. Mashallah. It's good. Alam. Shukur alhamdulillah. How are you? Good. Dobro. 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 <laughs> good. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's your father, huh? MashaAllah. How old is he? MashaAllah.
Shukur alhamdulillah. Hayır. Anything else anyone wants to say? How are you? Good. Then inshallah rahman we call it zan. We pray the inshallah. Eh, Suleiman, you are here. Oh, that's good. You're smiling a little bit, huh? I think you feel a little bit better. <laughs> okay, that's good. This afternoon, you're not even smiling one second. Now you come here and you smile. Something is shifting. Alhamdulillah. Okay, call us on. We pray, inshallah. Rahman. If you don't have wudu, you should renew your wudu. Bismillah. You should stand for prayer.